Good day everyone. So in this video, we are going to discuss on the development of paper manufacturing. Okay. So in this slide, in the next slide, we have here the term paper. So we all know that paper is just a thin material, okay, mainly used for writing, printing upon drawings or for packaging. So there are lots of uses. There are lots of uses of uh, papers as of now. So it's not only for writing, it's not only for printing, it's not for drawing. But it's not only for packaging, but some they are using it for other purposes. Okay, for uh, for uh, using it in their currency. Okay, we are using it for current our currencies and others. So we have here also the origin or the uh, on how we are going to produce papers or what on what uh, material was papers are being taken. Okay, so during the old times they are taking it from animal skins. Okay. But as of now, common of our papers or common papers, we are taking it from plants, okay, or trees, okay. So these fibers can be taken from woods, okay, rugs and grasses, okay, and then uh, that is being processed until it becomes or it could it turns to be a flexible sheets, and that is already what we are having now as paper, okay. And then uh, let's try to have here the development. Let's try to trace back the development of paper manufacturing or paper. So as you can see here in our picture, we have here the Sumerian Empire. So Sumerian Empire, we are referring to it now as in the Middle East. Okay, kung noon, they call it a Sumerian or Sumerian Empire. But now, we are uh, referring it to them as the Middle East countries. Okay, so we, what happened in Sumerian? So what is their contribution? So they have, or in Sumerian, we have here the term cuneiform. Okay, so we find, or those historians, they were able to find out some writings, okay? Old form of writings. And kung saan nila sinulat, okay, they, uh, they try to, or that was written, or those were written in clay tablet. Okay, cuneiform, this is one of the oldest forms of writing, and then it is written on a clay tablet. So noon, ang ginamit nila na writing material, Okay? Ang ginamit nila na writing material is clay tablets or stones yung mga iba. Okay? Stones okay? or clay tablets. And then ano yung gamit nila? So it's, uh, I mean, uh, this term cuneiform, it means also a wedge shape. Okay? So why it is termed as wedge shape? Okay? Because people wrote it using reed stylus cut. Okay? Or a sharp object, sharp pointed object to make a wedge shape mark on a clay tablet. Okay, so this serves as record information during the old times. Okay, ano na lang ang uh, example nun? Anong example ng mga nere-record nila na information during the ancient times? Especially in Sumerian Empire. Those are temple activities. Okay, business and trades informations na meron sila noon. They are using cuneiforms. So we have here an example of a cuneiform just like this one. Okay, so this is written on a clay tablet or these are writings that are read, uh, written in a clay tablet. Okay, so that is uniform. And then we have here the parchment. Okay, kung noon they are using a clay tablet but now they are using this parchment. Okay, so parchment, how it is being made or where it came from. Okay, so as you can see in the picture, it is seen or it is really said as an old kind of paper so it came from a thin but i mean this is a thin material came from a calf skin okay it come from an animal skin sheep skin or a goat skin and they are often split and then being dried until it becomes a flexible sheet okay so it's distinct from leather just like uh, those skin uh i mean this leather okay it is usually taken from a an animal skin Okay, and then it's almost the same with the uh, process of making paper. Okay, so as to paper, okay, or as making a parchment, okay, it is being dried for uh, how many, how many, ta how many days or how many hours, okay, and then until such time it becomes flexible. So finer quality of parchment is called volume. So this time meron tayo yung volume naman. It's a finer quality of part. Parchment. So, yung old, older, or yung, uh, ano do, yung uh, poor, or uh, it is 
uh, yung hindi masyadong uh, smooth, okay? Yung uh, quality ng uh, parchment that is usually taken from calf skin, sheep skin, or goat skin. Okay, while we have here the volume, okay, volume it is from, okay, it's not, uh, okay, so it's not uh, more on, ano to, uh, <clears throat> animal, okay, but we have here the modern paper, paper volume now, okay, especially the finest one, okay, they are taken from some plants, okay, and then tinawag na nila as paper volume, and vegetable volume, okay? But on the ancient times, during the ancient times, okay, it's still taken on in, taken from a calf skin, okay? So, or an animal skin, I should say, or mammal animal skin. So, it's a Latin word, okay? Or it came from a Latin word by uh, vitolinum, okay? Vitolinum, okay? And then the meaning of it is made from calf, okay? And then it's also came from, it also came from the old French word valid. Okay, and this is, uh, it means calf skin. Okay, so take note that vellum, it came from a mammal animal skin. So it's generally smoother or durable than the parchment, as you can see in the picture. So as you can, as you compare a while ago, if you are going to compare, okay, it's a little bit rough. Okay, and then yung chura, it's not that as straight or yung cuts niya, it's not that as straight. Unlike here in vellum. Okay, and then, uh, with that, okay, the quality of the skin and the type of animal used is one of the factors on how or on why uh, the paper is or the output or the paper okay, or the volume is smoother. Okay, so that depends on the animal or the quality of the skin of the animal or the type of animal that is or that was taken or the fiber was taken from. Okay, and then that's it for volume. So again, we have here now the Japanese or vegetable volume or the paper volume that they are calling now or modern paper volume. So we have here the Japanese or vegetable volume. So it's made from 100% cotton fiber. Okay, so this time uh, it gives a smoother or almost polished surface of or surface to the paper. So it's fibers from tea, bark or from plants already. It's not from animal. Okay, so it's bark of the tree or yung mga uh, dun sa kahoy. Okay, nakukuha. So, that is being uh, the one that is being used and then that is being uh, processed and then at, at the end, this is already called or that will be called already as Japanese or vegetable volume. Okay, and then uh, we have here now the papyru papyrus plant naman. So, this is one of the... Uh, oldest okay oldest uh, way or oldest kind of paper or they were able to create uh, this okay through taking the stems of the papyrus plant okay so meron tayo yung cyper cyperus papyrus or it is also called as paper plant during the old times okay so this papyrus plant it is being cultivated somewhere in Nile Delta region of Egypt, so don't matut matatagpuan. So, paano yung proseso nila in how or in making the papyrus paper or papyrus? So, they are going to cut down, okay, cut the stem of it, okay, and then at uh, after that, they are going to strip it, okay, or going or hati hati yan into uh, uh, ano to yung going maninipis, okay, they are going to slice. Slice it into several uh, uh, several slices, okay, and then at the after that they are going to uh, pinch it, okay, rolled with uh, an object, okay, and then until such time, uh, ma dry or ma form or ma it becomes thinner, and then after that they are going to dry it, okay, dry it for several hours, and then as you can see for almost eight hours or. Uh, more than eight hours, you can now have the output here of the papyrus plant or papyrus uh, or paper that is made from a papyrus plant. So as you can see, this is being used during the old times also. Okay, and that is for papyrus plant. And then now we have here again abaca. Okay, abaca is not only used for some uh, clothings or some uh, 
uh, for only uh, clothing, but it is also called or the fibers of the abaca. It is also being used for uh, production of paper. So take note, abaca is also called as balbalat paper or abaca papers, or it is also found or it is commonly found in the Philippines. Okay, so it, this is an a species or considered a species of banana. Okay, and then this is found here in our country. So anyway, we have here some examples of, in our picture, we have here some examples of abaca uh, paper. So it depends on the quality or it depends on the processing of the uh, paper, okay, or the abaca. In order to present, uh, in order to create a paper, okay, so meron yung brownish, and then meron din yung finer uh, processed, okay, abaca paper. And now we have here paper hemp process. So how is the paper hemp process? So this is being uh, being uh, made during these times also. Okay, so industrial hemp or hemp. However, this is so, uh, sometimes this is being uh, mistaken, okay, yeah. or this being taken illegal. Kasi nga, hemp's are uh, kind of drugs. They say that hemp's, these are kinds or these are considered also to be as drugs. So it's almost the same daw sa cannabis kasi. Cannabis, if you, are from, if, you, if you remember, cannabis or cannabis sativa, that is a drug or that is a plant for in a, wherein they call it as or in the general term, we call it as marijuana, okay? But as to the scientific name, we term it as cannabis sativa, okay? So, anyway, these uh, hemp plants, okay? Hemp uh, plants, these are being uh, used or can be used also as uh, paper, okay? So, still, as to the process, okay, still, it's just the same on the process on how they are, creating a uh, papyrus uh, paper okay or creating a uh, uh, traditional papers katulad nung papyrus kanina okay so it's just the same they are going to cut it down okay cut down the stems and then they are going to take it slice it uh, strip it for uh, for uh, thinner okay okay thin uh, cuts and then they are going to dry it okay they are going to dry it for several hours and then until such time it becomes a uh, flexible sheet and then they are going to have it already as a paper okay so that is for industrial hemp or paper hemp or called as the paper hemp process take note this is considered as an eco-friendly alternative okay to traditional paper kasi nga noon they are going they are taking okay they are taking such uh, ano to, yung large trees na meron tayo. Okay? Trees that are uh, hard to grow. Okay? Kasi nga itong industrial hemp or yung mga hemp na to or yung cannabis na ito, they are easily grown. Madali silang tumubo. Unlike yung mga punong kahoy na mahirap tumubo. So that's why they say that this is an eco-friendly. However, sometimes they are using it in other purposes. That's why it is illegal. Okay? Cannabis sativa. Well, well anyway, uh, there are, uh, I mean, uh, there, it is not only cannabis sativa or it is not only, or there are lots of kinds. Okay, I should say there are lots of kinds of hemp plants. It's not only cannabis or it's not only marijuana. Okay, and yes, we are moving, going to move on with the writing instrument already. So for the writing instrument, yes, we are commonly using now, okay, inks, okay, in, our, in order for us to write. So it's simply liquids or it could be okay it's a liquid or paste that contains pigments or dyes in order for us to use to color a surface to produce an image or text or design okay so some could be just a fluid viscous marking material and yes what are the classes of ink that we have here okay so we have the fountain fountain pen ink so ano yung characteristics ng fountain Pen ink. So it is actually a water-based ink intended with or used for fountain pens. Okay, so fountain pens, okay, uh, I believe that uh, we are already or nagamit nyo na yung fountain pen na ito. So ano ba yung uh, consist, ano yung content ng fountain 
pen ink. Okay, so take note of the chemicals that is being contained or uh, being uh, included in making a fountain pen ink. So we have here, it contains an ordinary iron galutinate ink okay, with a lower iron content. Okay, in most but uh, higher dye stuff content than normal inks. So it has, uh, take note of the two, it has galutinate ink. Okay, iron galutinate ink and then it has a higher dye stuff. It's not pigment ink but higher dye stuff. So anyway, uh, this is also an ink that is not, uh, or it should not be uh, written with so much pressure kasi ang mangyayari dyan, okay, mamumuo, mamumuo yung uh, ink or madaling mamuo yung ink. Katulad na lang ng, if you observe, yung sign pen na meron tayo. Okay, parang ganun yung tura. So, it's on, it only needs just a little pressure. Okay, well, as to the content, that is for the chemical content of the fountain pen ink. Okay, next is the dye stuff ink. So, these are the common, one of the... Uh, one of the kind, I mean, uh, one kind of ink that we are using now in our inkjet printers nowadays, okay? And then, uh, aside from uh, dye stuff, meron yung pigment ink naman na ginagamit. So, we are going to compare it later on. So, ano ba yung content ng dye stuff ink naman? So, it's an aqueous solution of synthetic dye stuff, okay? So, it's a preservative, okay? Flux are added and the quality of ink are improved by with the uh, by the addition of substance. Okay, so these are the content. It has glycerol, okay, glucose, and dextrin. Okay, uh, okay, so glycerol, glucose, or dextrin content or chemical content of the ink. Okay, and then uh, what is the characteristic of the ink that is being produced by a dye? Okay, or the writings that are being produced by a dye ink. So let us try to compare with pigment ink. Okay, so dye ink kasi. Okay, it provides softer color which look more vivid and brilliant than pigment ink. Okay, so mas maganda yung quality ng kulay. Okay, or ng uh, sulat ng dye ink. Okay, pag titignan natin sa uh, pigment ink kasi mas lighter yung color naman niya kaysa dun sa dye ink. Okay, and uh, they are more water resistant. Yun nga lang, it is more water resistant than sa dye ink. Okay, while producing a truer solid black than dye. Okay? So, yan yung pagkakaiba. So, advantage niya, mas maganda or mas vivid or mas clear yung color. Pero sa pigment ink, mas malabo pero waterproof siya. Mas waterproof. And then, kapag black na kulay or it produces a truer solid black. Okay? Color than dye. Okay? And then, it may come off when getting, getting in contact with water unless printed on a special coated labor label material. So, madaling matanggal sa tubig. Okay? Unlike dito na waterproof. And the print is water resistant as long as the label does not rub against any disturbing. So, pag uh, pwedeng uh, hindi madaling masira, okay, yung picture okay, na nagamit ang dye ink, so long as hindi siya natutupi or hindi siya nirarab. Okay? Or ginugusot. At pag yan ay nirab, okay, or ginusot mo, then uh, mawawala or ma yung print ng picture is yan, it will fade okay and then uh, especially when the label is exposed to UV light for many months the pigment ink holds its color okay quality and vibrancy better than dye so kung mapapansin niyo sa pigment ink nandito yung long lasting okay characteristic mas long lasting ang pigment ink kaysa sa dye ink Okay, so uh, water resistance, long in life with uh, durability, okay, plus color consistency, the winner is pigment ink. Mas maganda ang pigment ink when it comes to uh, long lasting, okay, and then yung uh, long lasting nung uh, printing and then nung kulay. Okay, unlike sa, pig, sa dye ink, madaling kumupas. Maganda nga yung... Maganda nga yung uh, Ano to yung print niya sa una, okay? clear, klaro, pero pag uh, nagtagal, madaling lumabo. Okay, so yun yung dye ink. Or yan yung uh, disadvantage na dye ink. So when it comes to quality, okay, generally spoken, dye ink wins quality of the color. However, pigment ink is for long-lasting. 
Okay. So uh, that is for the the uh, that is for the uh, ano to, the difference of those two. So as you can see, the dye ink it is water based kasi siya. So mas lumalalim or uh, pinepenetrate niya yung paper. Okay? Mas uh, uh, yung uh, content okay, ng dye ink, okay, it, it penetrates the paper. Unlike itong pigment ink, okay, it just, it doesn't penetrate the internal parts of the paper. It's just only uh, impressed, okay, or imprinted on the outer part or outermost part of the paper. Okay, so that is for the difference of those two. Okay, and then uh, we have here the water-resistant writing and drawing inks. So what are those water-resistant okay, writing and drawing inks? So these inks are a special group of dye stuff ink. And then what are the contents in order for us to make it as a water-resistant? Okay, so they usually, okay, they usually use some solution. Okay, solution shellac made soluble in water means by means of borax, liquid, ammonia, and ammonium bicarbonate. So anyway, ang shellac na ito, it is a resinous substance melted into thin flakes okay, used for making varnish. So halos katulad ng uh, substance na makikita natin sa varnish or yung ginagamit sa kahoy. Okay? Pinagpipintura sa kahoy pas, para mas mapatinggan pa. Aside from maprotektahan yung gilid or yung uh, surface ng kahoy, but it is also to uh, make the or it will uh, preserve the, or it will make the color, okay? Para mas mapaganda pa yung uh, kulay ng kahoy. Okay, and then uh, uh, that is also added, okay? Or that could be added to borax, okay? Liquid ammonia and ammonium bicarbonate to make it as a water-resistant writing and drawing inks. Well, okay, so we have here alkaline writing ink naman, okay? Alkaline writing ink, it is... Uh, a quick drying ink okay a quick drying ink okay which possess the acidity so ph symbol it symbol it refers to acidity acidity level okay kapag ph yan acidity level ang tinutukoy niyan okay so the acidity uh, level of uh, alkaline writing ink is 9 to 11 so it's quick drying okay maganda to when it comes to yun uh, madali siyang uh, uh, mud dry. Okay, so it can penetrate quickly through the size of the paper, allowing the ink to penetrate the paper. And yes, since it is a quick drying ink, so madali niya ring masira or it is, it can easily destroy papers. That's why it is really needed if you are going to use alkaline writing ink, you need to use acid-free paper. Okay, para hindi madamage or it, Kasi kapag ibang klase ng papel yung gagamitin mo, madaling madamage yung paper. That's why we can use acid-free paper when using alkaline writing ink. So ano kasi yung uh, kagandahan nito? They are using it for arts. Okay, gusto yung ibang artists, they are they want those kind of inks that can easily dry. Okay, para mas madali nilang uh, madali nilang mapagmix yung mga kulay na gusto nila in order for them to create okay more or more beautiful okay mas mapaganda nila yung arts nila okay so we have here also another kind of ink this is the common one that we are using right now okay the ballpoint pen ink okay so this was developed okay during the world war 2 it's because of the need of a an instrument writing instrument that it, that could not leak at a high attitude that's why Ballpoint ink nowadays are being uh, used or being uh, commonly used nowadays. Okay, and then uh, stamp pad ink. So these are the ones that we are using, especially in taking, uh, okay, signet, uh, ano to, in marking. Or they are using it for marking, okay, uh, uh, papers. Okay, instead of signing it, they are just going to use stamp pad okay, with the stamp pad ink, and then they are going to use that as a uh, sign, okay, notifying or uh, a sign uh, authenticating the document. So what are the composition of this? Okay, these are made of substances such as glycerol, acetone, glycerol, benzyl, alcohol. Okay, so that is the composition of stamp pad ink. And then we have here the hectograph. 
Yung hectograph naman, it is actually a process. Okay, it's a printing process. It's not actually a kind of ink. However, in hectograph pr printing process, they are using a special kind of ink. So this was not able to mention. It was not able, uh, we were not able to find out what kind of ink they are using in here. However, as you can see in the picture, it's just a kind of, or it's a printing process wherein they are using a pan, okay? A pan of gelatin or a gelatin pad pulled. I mean, gelatin pad, okay? And then we have here the writing, okay? Nandyan yung nakasulat. And then how are they going to print it? So they are going to have here the pan with the special ink and then they are going to impress the paper in here. Okay? And then matatransfer yung sulat. Itong sulat matatransfer ito sa pan. And then that's the time uh, kukuha sila ng bagong papel. Kukuha sila ng bagong papel na walang sulat in order for them to copy yung nandito sa nandito sa pan. And then idikit nila yon and then it will be copied. Okay? That's why they say that hectograph, it is a printing process. Okay? So you can watch that also in other uh, or we, will, we are going to attach the supporting video on how is the process of hectograph. Okay? So we have here also the typewriter ribbon. Okay? So simply this is the uh, this is used okay, for impact printing. So it's not a it's not actually a kind of ink, but you can have here, or we ca you can see here the typewriting ribbon. So it's a part of the of a typewriter. So jan to matama po yung yung uh, part ng uh, typewriter that is the one that is impressing. Okay, the letters na mabubuo don sa paper. Okay, that's why this is called as impact printing. Kasi that the letter is being formed okay, because of the impact that was being pressured by this part of the typewriter okay and then take note that it is also called as ink rib ink ribbon yung typewriter ribbon na ito okay and then uh, we have here the liquid lead pencil ink naman okay itong liquid lead pencil ink naman this is commonly produced by the sharpie company nowadays okay so it is a non erasable pencil okay so katulad ng ball pen na non erasable so anyway, it contains an ink made from liquid graphite. So it's, the con it's from liquid graphite. Okay? So once, uh, hindi agad-agad magiging permanent ito. Kaya merong advantage yung gantong klase ng uh, ink. Okay? Kasi kailan lang magiging permanent yung sulat? Hindi ka tulad ng ballpen, pag sinulat mo yan ngayon, automatic it's already permanent. Okay? However, you are going for the liquid lead pencil ink, you are going to wait for three days, okay, in order for that to become permanent. So, for, within that three days, pwede mo pang erasin, ng, uh, erasin manually, rubber or manual kind of erasure, okay, within that three days. Pero kapag lumagpas na ng three days, then the writings is already forever or it's already permanent. Okay, so that is for liquid lead pencil ink. And then we have here the iron gall ink naman. What is this iron gall ink? Take note that is all that it is also called as iron gall nut ink or oak gall ink. Okay, anong kulay nito? Take note of the color of iron gall ink. So it is colored as purple black, okay, or brown black and it is made from iron salts and tannic acids. Okay? So saan nanggagaling yan? From vegetables. Yung kantong klase ng Substance. Okay, so it was the standard writing and drawing ink in Europe in 12th century and 10th century as too. Uh, and it is used well into the 20th century as of now. Okay, as to the history of the use of iron gall ink. Okay, and then uh, now we are going to have here the pen. Okay, so a while ago, different kinds of ink. Now we are going to move on with pen or writing instruments. So as to... Uh, here, uh, we have the basic parts. Let's try to familiarize the basic parts of the pen. So, we have here the barrel. So sim simply, the barrel, we refer to the covering of the pen. Okay? And then, we have here some of the pen has spring. Okay? Pero meron din yung iba na wala. Okay? And then, meron yung end cap. Okay? Meron yung uh, ibang ball pen na merong end cap. And then, uh, this is the one that we should familiarize because we are going to encounter this terminologies as we study or as we continue studying handwriting or as we continue studying 
question document. So as you can see in here, we have here the ball point, okay? And then we have here the socket. Socket or the, yes, we have here the socket, yung tawag natin dito sa part ng ball pin na ito. And then yung ball, yan yung nakapaloob dun sa, or it is attached with the socket. Okay, and then yung ink, syempre yung laman nung reservoir. Okay, yung reservoir, itong reservoir, ito yung naglalaman nung ink. It contains the ink. So, yan yung basic parts ng pen. So, if you are going to encounter reservoir, that is the one that contains the ink. Okay, and then we have here, again, pen. Syempre, this is a Latin. It comes from the Latin word pena or in other words, it means feather. Okay, so this is used or the common device that we are using now for writing. Okay, so in as to history, nagsimula ang uh, pen, okay, or nag meron tayo yung sinaunang pens, which are called as reed pens, okay, quail pens, and deep pens. Okay, yun yung mga naunang klase ng uh, pens. And then that most of those are called are, or classified as nib deep ink. I mean ink. Or nib deep ink pens. Okay, so ruling... Pens allow precise adjustment of line width and still find a few specialized uses nowadays. So, modern types of pens, ano yung meron na tayo ngayon? Ballpoint, rollerball, fountain, and felt or ceramic tip pens. So, let's try to have them one by one. So, as to the history, the first kind of pen that we are that was used was the reed pen or swamp reed. Okay, so it simply came from the bamboo. So, Mag, uh, parang uh, bamboo plant. So, kung makikita nyo, wala siyang reserva, wala siyang makikita uh, spring and others. So, it's just simply, okay, a stem coming from, cut stem part of a plant. Okay, so it came, it came from a specially selected water grasses found in Egypt during the old times. So, it was used as the first writing tool that had the writing end slightly frayed, okay, like a brush. And this was used, okay, about 2,000 years Busy, this reed pen was the first used in Near East on papyrus. Okay? Or yung paper na ito na nagamit nun. Okay? So, ideally, they, they are using reed pen or swamp reed pen okay? on parchment and papyrus. And next in here is the quail pen. So, simply, it came from the weather of a, I mean, a feather, I should say. Feather of a bird. Okay? So, quail pen, okay? it's selected. Uh, selected the... Uh, bird, kinds of birds. So, it's usually a large bird and then it was taken on the wing part. Okay? Okay? Wing part of the bird. And uh, yes, the it is a writing implement crafted from a bird's wing feather and then that is being dipped with a certain ink and that is the one that is being used is a writing instrument. So, quail pen. Quail pen. And another one we have here, the deep pen. Deep pen, it's already, it is also called a slip pen. Okay, so we have here, it consists a metal nib. Okay, as you can see in the picture, it consists a metal nib with capillary channels. Okay, like those fountain pen that we are having right now. Okay, however, yes, as you can see, it has already, okay, it has no ink reserva. This kind of dip pen or this dip pen, it has no ink reserva. So, yun, kinakailangan mo nang. Uh, bottled ink dito in order for you to uh, fill bottled ink. Okay? And then, doon mo na lang isasawsaw. Okay? Sinasawsaw yung uh, nib okay? ng pen and then that is being uh, and that's the time you can use it again for writing. So, wala siyang reserva or walang part na nagko-contain ng ink. Okay? So, kakailangan mong i-dip yan sa uh, bottled ink in order for you to write. Okay? So, that is for the uh, this is for deep pen. And now we are going to have here fountain pen. So in comparison with deep pen, okay, or yes, uh, yung nib pen, okay, or deep pen, in comparison, fountain pen has already a reservoir. Okay, so it has already an internal reservoir and then don't nakukontain yung ink niya. However, yung mechanism is still the same with the nib pen. Okay, and then uh, yung reservoir, Okay, it has, since it has contained, uh, it contains ink already, so hindi na kinakailangan na isa-isa or bawat sulat, you are going to dip the point part, pointed part of the uh, pen, okay, in order for you to write. So, uh, maubos yung uh, nasa reserva, okay, 
that is removable, removable so you can uh, refill it again with ink and then you can put it back and use it again for writing so it's no need or fountain pens it doesn't need a strong pressure in order for you to write so just a little pressure or no pressure at all in, or in writing because if you are going to put more pressure on it then the writings it becomes larger or this ink will spread or it, the ink easily spread okay that's why you should be careful in using fountain pens so on a part or the basic parts of a fine fountain pen okay so we have here the nib okay it is the one that is in contact with the paper okay and then we have here the feed okay nib collar and these are the mechanism that contains okay the reservoir and then the ink cartridge okay and we have here the grip section of course this is the one that you are going to hold in order for you to write okay and then we have here the reservoir ink reservoir that is the one that contains the ink and then uh, the part okay this is the mechanism that does kas para hindi dere derecho yung ink or hindi tatagas ng masyado meron yung cartridge okay this is the one that can control the flow of the ink para hindi masyadong marami yung may lalabas niya while writing. Okay, and then we have here the cup, okay, and of course the barrel of the ink. I mean uh, of the pen, yes. And we have here the ballpoint pen. Okay, so this was uh, again, of course this was already mentioned a while ago why it was created. It's because the need of those uh, military personnel, those who are in the higher altitude, okay? Para hindi, uh, hindi tumatagas yung ink, okay? Or tumitigas yung ink. That's why we, ballpoint ink was created. Okay, so common, uh, I mean, uh, common uh, to ballpoint ink, it has, of course, an ink reservoir, internal ink reservoir, and yung ink niya, it's viscous. In, unlike those other inks na, hindi ano to yung uh, hindi siya viscous that's why madali siyang uh, tumagas or madaling uh, ano to simping pressure lang i mean pressure lang yung magamit is masyado nang nag-spread yung writing niya okay so common okay sizes of the spear of the ball point of the uh, pen is 0.5 mm to 1.2 mm in diameter so it could be made from brass steel or tungsten carbine or any durable or hard material okay and then we have here the fiber tip pens naman okay fiber tip pens naman is ito yung uh, marker okay usually these are the markers that we are having right now or marking pen so it could be uh, yung uh, nib nya okay it's like a cotton okay or fiber so it has its own sink ink source, okay, or reservoir, and then uh, usually a tip made of porous or pressed fibers such as felt. Oh, by the way, they call it as felt. So it's a it's a fiber, okay, that is soft, okay, that is being commonly used in fiber tip pens or in markers, okay. And then it's a typ typical permanent marker consists of a container, okay, glass. Aluminum plus it could be from glass, aluminum, or plastic, and the core of in a core of an absorbent material such as felt, as we have mentioned a while ago. Okay, and then ano yung content or yung common na uh, chemical na ginagamit nila? Okay, so uh, solvents, okay, and the common solvents that were being uh, included in here or being used in here is the toluene and silene. Okay, however, it has or it produces strong smell and harmful. Kaya ganun yung mga pental pen na meron tayo noon. Okay? Medyo mabaho or masyadong matapang yung amoy niya. Okay? So, hindi na ginagamit yung tulin or silin na substance. So, ano yung ginagamit? It's already uh, alcohol-based. Alcohol-based ink already are being used in fiber tip pens. So, hindi na from tulin or silin. Okay? So, alcohol markers, okay, yung ginagamit na ngayon. So, this has a less... Uh, chance of smudging in producing faded and watery colors and hindi na masyadong ma-amoy or matapang yung amoy. Okay, and then it has per also permanent on most surfaces or they can pr uh, provide permanent on most surfaces or permanent writing, I should say, and easily layer them. Okay, and then as the inks are slightly opaque, you can create color overlays to alter the shade of your work. 
and create multi-toned highlights blends. And ito rin yung gustong-gusto ng mga artist, yung alcohol markers, alcohol-based markers. Kasi, di ba sa mga artist, they like yung mga, uh, they like combining different colors or yung blending na sinasabi nila. Blending, we're in, uh, meron kasi yung mga ibang uh, inks na ginagamit na hindi mo pwedeng ma-blend yung color. Okay? So, in order for them to create this kind of art or drawing, okay, or painting, uh, they use blending, okay? They applied blending of uh, colors. And then that is because of alcohol markers. That's why they were able to create this such kind of uh, painting, okay? So, madaling ma... Yung layer na sinasabi na easily layer yung, uh, yung, yung uh, kulay, okay? Or yung uh, writings is yung pwedeng ma-mix nila, mapag-mix. Mari, ang unang sinula, ginamit nila is kulay red. Okay? And then, they want to make that a little bit or they want to combine some other colors to create another color. Diba? Combining different kinds of color, it can create another color. Okay? So, layering and then, I mean, uh, after red, they want it to mix with blue. So, yun, they were able to create such different colors in there. However, as you can see in my uh, in our screen, pag ginawa natin yun, di ba, natatabunan? Natatabunan yung kulay, hindi siya nagbo-blend. Okay? Hindi nagbo-blend or hindi nakakreate yung, nakakreate ng mas magandang kulay. So, same as to alcohol, or that is the reason why they prefer alcohol markers, some of the, uh, some of the artists that we have nowadays. Okay? And then, uh, next we have here the pencil. So, syempre pencil, this is commonly known as lead pencils also. Okay, and then anong construction and it's made of wood and of course the content or the ones that are being used there is graphite powder that is being hardened. Okay, so that is for pencil. Okay, so as to the basic parts, we have here the eraser of course and then the band in here. Okay, this is the one that secure the eraser and then we have the barrel that supports the graphite inside. Okay, para hindi maputol yung graphite na nagagamit sa pagsulat and then we have here the paint of the barrel and then we have here the lead that wants the that is the one that marks the surface or the writing instrument okay and next in here is the handwriting identification ex examination but we are going to have this in our next video presentation so as of now we are going to end on the writing instrument and then next video presentation we are going to have handwriting, identification, and examination. So again, if you have a question, kindly uh, put it in our comment section or if not, kindly save it. And let's try to discuss it in our synchronous session. So again, thank you very much for watching and see you on our synchronous session.